When great grandfather was a gay young blade, and great grandmother was his bride, they found a lot, a very pretty spot, over on the old north side. It sloped down to the river, from River Avenue. Great grandma said that it would give her such a lovely view. So they took a look in Goldie's lady's book to see what they could find. And they found a house, a jolly little house with the queen in front and the merry in behind. Great grandfather was a handy man who never wasted any time. He found a crew who knew just what to do with white pine, common brick and lime. He said, we'll build a big veranda or Aunt Amanda can perch. And I'll sit there on Sunday morning when everybody else has gone to church. The neighbor said he's crazy in the head. He surely lost his mind. But he built that house, the jolly little house, with the queen and front and the merry and behind. When great grandpa at last was laid away with great grandmother by his side, Dear Aunt Amanda said, my land, a vacant house I can't abide. I'll start a lady seminary and make it very select. It will be very necessary that all my girls be circumspect. As you may guess, it was a great success and her girls were so refined. In the self-same house, the jolly little house with the queen and front and the merry and behind. When Aunt Amanda's work at last was done and she had gone to her reward, appeared a sign which bore the line announcing simply room and board. The old house soon was filled with rumors of every degree. Red flannel, underwear and bloomers were hanging out for everyone to see. The old front stoop had started into droop and the house looked so resigned. The self-same house, the jolly little house with the queen and front and the merry and behind. The poor old house got looking worse and worse and so did River Avenue. And wooden shacks across the tracks spoiled great grandma's lovely view. When several very pretty ladies moved in there one day, they were such charming Susan Sadies, but a wagon came and took them all away. There was one old dame says, it's a dirty shame, my girls are so refined. But they closed that house, the jolly little house, with the queen and front and a merry and behind. The Doric Column is coming back from Ho Ho Hocus to Hackensack. You'll see lots more of them from now on. The Steel Pipe Column is now Detroit. No plinth, no edifices, or no chapeau. Looks as though the darn things are really gone. People thought Lally Columns really were here to stay. But disciples of Phidias thought they were hideous, so they've had their day. The Doric column is coming back. Column makers are making jack. And if you join the real elite bon ton, just get yourself a front porch Parthenon. Back in the age of Pericles, the real smart folks were Greeks. They knew about beauty, their columns were fluty, and they all had snooty Greek beaks. They had a style called peristyle, with the pediment over the frieze. Crown was superior, acroteria, sloping at 30 degrees. They left a legacy for you and me. The Doric column is coming back. Computations by Univac indicate a real phenomenon. Motel keepers think they look swell. You can see them on each motel. Heaven knows how many have been drawn. 
I wonder if old Ictinus knew what he went and done. We've extended his thesis from Peloponnesus to highway number one. The Doric column is coming back. And if you'd wash up and have a snack, no use for you to think of driving on. Just pull up at a parkway Parthenon. We had a Greek revival way back in 1810. With atomic survival's predicted arrival, we'll have a revival again. Latest dispatches from Delphi, newly arrived today. And the ancient historic Olympian oracle says it's on its way. When the Delphic oracle speaks, you better watch out for the Greeks, cause the Doric column is coming back. You will see them on every shack, they're part of every builder's lexicon. Folks are ready to shoot their wad on a miniature Greek facade, and perhaps a front lawn iron fawn. Picture a picture window stuck in a Parthenon with Pepidopolis on his Acropolis mowing his velvet lawn. I had a dream where Myron spoke. Listen carefully and then I woke and then I saw sweet rosy finger dawn. Touch lovingly the poor man's Parthenon. Everyone's heard of the Three Musketeers by the great Alexander Dumas and of Aramis, Porthos, and Athos careers of bravado and ooh-la-la-la. But please let me sing you, my dears, of a different three musketeers. There's Walter and Mies and Corbu, la-la-la, la-la-la, Walter and Mies and Corbu. Boston has Walter, Chicago has Mies, Corbu flits around between Paris and Nice, it's Walter and Mies and Corbu. A great architectural crew, and if you can endure just pure architecture, get Walter or Mies or Corbu. When Walter designed the Bauhaus, Der Adolf said, ah, was is Laus? The Bauhaus at last quickly met its decease. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mies. It caused quite a hullabaloo. But Adolf, thank heaven, is through. So it's wie geht's, how goes it, vote sante und prose it to Walter and Mies and Corbu. Walter and Mies and Corbu, la la la, la la la, bad the bows are sad to do. Form follows, function, ya vol, sprek der vault. Corbu said we oui, we, oui, and der mies said give out. They soon threw the classics askew. Most everyone got in the queue. And built by the mild international style after Walter and Mies and Corbu. Walter and Mies and Corbu. Still cause a lot of to do. They're widely discussed at a feet seminars, and I've heard their names bandied about in low bars. There are other good men, it is true. But between you and me, entre nous, when we cry in our beers, the three great musketeers are Walter and Mies and Corbu. One day they will all meet their fates and enter through St. Peter's gates who'll get the commission for the redesign and overall planning for cloud number nine when Walter and Mies and Corbu compete at their last rendezvous. Will it be Frank Lloyd Wright or McKean Mead and White or Walter or Mies or Corbu? The lamps of architecture are seven, quoth Ruskin as he pulled his Venetian gondola. The orders are five, and the first one is Tuscan, said Giacomo Barazzi Vignola. Maybe Ruskin was right, Vignola was right, 
But now neither figure will tally For John hadn't heard about fluorescent light And Giacomo knew nothing of Lally John Lally of Boston put in a few licks Designed a new order and now there are six The first one is Tuscan, the second is Doric And both may be found in Despuis Remember those analytic sophomoric, those private museums in Class B. Oh, the lovely Ionic, how truly ironic, there's hardly a man left alive, oh, who can draw a volute and a cornice to boot, as we did when the orders were five, oh. John Lally of Boston at art took a swipe, knocked her out cold with a concrete-filled pipe. The third is Ionic, the fourth is Corinthian, how lush the acanthus, the frieze. How it often entwines in a way labyrinthian, what modillions, what sweeping OGs. And the effie composite with Ionic sire and well-dressed Corinthian mother. Once brought off the van dressed in gala attire, but John Lally, he added another. John Lally of Boston would have none of those. He wanted the column without any clothes. John Lally's sixth column was very insidious. It lurked under porches and alleys. Relinquished the hills to disciples of Phidias, entrenched itself firmly in valleys. With sly self-effacement, it hid in each basement, but soon began gaining in status. Amongst wealth and passion, it's now all the fashion and adds to artistic afflatus. John Lally of Boston, how things do get on, your thin, ugly duckling turned into a swan. And what prey of Boston, of Lowell and Cabot, home of the bean and the cod, and of Shepley and Coolidge and Bullfinch and Abbott, and a weekend stopover for God. Did the Brahmins converse over afternoon tea with accents exceedingly solemn? Did they voice their dismay in their haunts in Back Bay when they heard of this upstart sixth column? John Lally of Boston, he just didn't know. His prop knocked the props from the old state house crow. Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye. Love walked out and slammed our creaking door. Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye. We are hardly speaking anymore. She doesn't care to pitter pat around our spare unlittered flat. Hates our bare white painted walls, wants a knick-knack nook and lots of faulty rolls. My cutie pie says we must beautify, must beautify. Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye. Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye. Baby says that life is just a ball. Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye. Baby's tired of sitting on the floor. She says chairs, I say mats. She says mats are just for cats. It is a risk on mats to frisk. What you gonna do when I slip my disc? Baby's moaning low and getting high, she's getting high. Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye. Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye. Baby says she's got to have decor. Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye. She went and bought a Watto Escritor. She bought wallpaper and she bought some chintz, a mohair sofa and some aqua tints. 
her new upholstery took yards and yards Cause she grew out of all her leotards Baby says we'll have high five by and by Ay, 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 ay Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye And she says no more beard or dungarees No more yodeling like the Tyrolese She gave away my old guitar My bongos battle like and my samovar Baby says I must wear a coat and tie I just could die Baby and I, we don't see eye to eye Where are the bones of Inigo Jones, follower of Palladio, favorite architect to the king and a very famous Ladio. He showed the way to Christopher Wren, the classics to revival, and Christopher learned his lesson so well that quite mightily he did thrive. Oh, he learned it well. From Inigo Jones and Great St. Paul's contains his bones. Requies cut and pache, and amen to the old white bones of Christopher Wren. Back in the year 1660 and 6, a terrible conflagration nearly burned down all of old London town and it shocked the English nation. There were 50 churches burning more bright than any altar candle. How now, said the king, surely here is a thing that our Christopher Wren can handle. What say the bells of blessed St. James ring out for one of our famous names? Requiescat in pace and amen to the old white bones of Christopher Wren. Then the king said to Christopher Wren, speedily now design, oh. And Christopher met with his merry young men each morning sharp at nine, oh. Fifty churches Christopher drew in the Roman classic manner, and the bishop he paid him in pounds and in pence, and he haggled at every tanner. What say the bells of gentle St. Brides? We have no fear where his soul abides. Requies Captain Pache, and amen to the old white bones of Christopher Wren. Soon all the churches began to rise, burgeoning into flower, and the bishop sent petulant Billy do at the sight of each brave new tower. But the deacons, canons, and clerics all prayed and sang good Christopher's praises, blessing each stone as it knew was laid in elegant Latin phrases. What say the bells of Londium? Sing la date dominum, requiescat in pace, and amen to the old white bones of Christopher Wren. With Christopher's masterpiece, Great St. Paul's, the king was indeed delighted, and word got around in the royal halls that Christopher would be knighted. And as he knelt in front of the king, he heard when he was kneeling, all the bow bells beginning to ring, and all of the others pealing. What say the bells of merrily bow, Benedictamus Domino, requiescat in pace, and amen to the old white bones of Christopher Wren.